In this video, we are going to talk about combination and decomposition reactions, two of the five types of reactions that we will be studying. We are going to start with combination reactions, and the definition of a combination reaction is as follows. It's a chemical change in which two or more substances react to form a single new substance. And the key there is it's forming a single new substance. Uh, here is a graphic that will kind of demonstrate what this can look like. Um, the top portion of this graphic shows a red circle and a yellow circle, uh, and they combine to make an orange circle. Um, otherwise, we can go with the letters A plus B yields or reacts to form AB. All right, so it's two or more substances that react to form a single new substance. An example of this that you've seen in class already is magnesium uh, reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Uh, this, if you remember, uh, releases a lot of energy, has a very bright glow, um, and is the following combination reaction. So uh, for the balanced chemical equation, we have two magnesium bonds with an oxygen molecule, which is O2, and it gives us two formula units of magnesium oxide. This is a combination reaction uh, because you can see there are two or more substances, magnesium and oxygen, forming one new substance. Alright, we're going to talk about uh, copper and sulfur. And the reason I want to talk about copper and sulfur uh, reacting in a combination reaction is because transition metals can be a little bit funny. Uh, remember that they can have multiple oxidation states. So copper can form copper 1 and copper 2, meaning it can have a 1 positive charge or a two positive charge depending upon the conditions in which it reacts. Uh, this means that there are multiple different combination reactions between just copper and sulfur. Let's take a look at these. For copper one, uh, it combines uh, two copper atoms with one atom of sulfur to form Cu2S, okay? Uh, the copper in this case has a one positive charge. The sulfur uh, forms a sulfide ion and has a two negative charge, so it takes two copper atoms to offset that. With copper two, however, um, you can see that they bond in a one-to-one -one ratio. The copper forms a two positive charge. The sulfur still has a two negative charge, uh, and that forms CuS. Um, these are both combination reactions. In both cases, we're taking multiple uh, different types of elements, in this case, combining them together, uh, reacting them so that they form a single new compound. Uh, the general equation for this, so if you're going to write this in general form, it is R plus S yields RS. There are generally two elements or compounds, uh, and that'll be a way to identify uh, these reactions uh, when you're having to name what type of reaction something is, is there will be a single product and generally two or more uh, reactants. Okay, we're going to move into decomposition reactions. And decomposition reactions are kind of like the opposite of combination. Uh, rather than taking two or more uh, substances and forming one product, uh, we're going to take one thing, one reactant, and we're going to break it down into two or more compounds, uh, two or more products. And here's the form. So we have purple, uh, and if we react that purple, if we send that through a decomposition reaction, it gives us blue plus red. Or we can take BC, have it undergo a decomposition reaction, and it will give us the components B and C. Um, if you go back and compare this to what the combination reaction looks like, they'll look like just mirror images of each other. An example is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, 
the formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, uh, and this decomposes into water and oxygen. Uh, decomposition reactions are some of the hardest to predict the products. Uh, many people would see H2O2 and expect that it decomposes into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And while there's a way to make this happen, um, that is not the typical decomposition reaction that it undergoes. Um, so these can be a little bit tricky. But again, we're taking one type of reactant, one substance, having it undergo decomposition. Uh, that could mean heating it, uh, a exposing it to light, um, applying electricity to it, um, many different ways that this can happen. But it will ultimately form two or more substances as the products. The general equation for a decomposition reaction is Rs yields R plus S. Reactants are is typically just one binary compound. And if it's a binary compound, that means it's made up of only two types of atoms. Those are, are usually the easier type to predict how they'll decompose. When it starts to get hard is when there are compounds with uh, polyatomic ions in them. Probable products are binary compounds, uh, two elements, uh, so if it's a binary compound, it should typically decompose into two elements. I showed you an exception to that rule uh, just a moment ago with the hydrogen peroxide. But usually, uh, we'll, we'll predict that a reaction will form the two elements in the binary compound. Uh, the others are difficult. Um, it could be two or more elements or compounds. Uh, it's, you kind of have to go through the reaction or be exposed to it to know how to predict that, but we'll get a little practice and we'll let you take a shot at that. Um, there are uh, practice problems listed uh, in the Moodle page with this video from your textbook that you can go and investigate. Thank you.